And the question is, who is a leader? I have many questions. I have about 30 questions here, which I'm not going to attempt to answer all. I'm hoping that subsequent weekends, I will be attempting to answer many of these questions. Is that okay? But the question, who is a leader? Simply put, a leader is a person who leads. Abi, praise God. So what is leadership? What is, oh, is leadership a science? Is it an act? Or what exactly is it? Then the question that, that no one has agreed on is are leaders born or are leaders made? Research has been made. People have argued and argued and nobody has agreed on one simple answer. My answer is that the two positions are correct. Some are born, some are made. Are you with me? The two positions are correct. Jesus was born a leader. Are you with me? He was, all the attributes of leadership was, was infused in him at birth. Hallelujah. Whereas some people were not born leaders, but circumstances pushed them forward to become leaders. They were, that was not basically what you can call was their calling. A man called Amos said he was, he was a shepherd. God was, that was, was his profession, he was a shepherd. But somehow God found him and God put a calling on his life and he had to step out to give leadership. So a man called um, Gideon was not a born leader. Am I making sense? If you look at the man, you will say that the man had certain attributes that made him um, unqualified for leadership. Number one, he said he was of the smallest tribe, of the smallest family, from the smallest tribe in Israel. And by reason of that, it meant that he had nothing to lay claim on or lay claim to to have qualified him to stand and say, I want to give leadership to Israel. He had no such qualifications. But God made him a leader. Am I communicating this tonight? So situation made people like that leaders. A man like Nehemiah was not a leader by reason of that. He was an administrator. But circumstances surrounding his life thrust him into leadership. Praise God. Now, people say a lot of things about was Adolf Hitler a leader? If you read many authors, they will tell you Adolf Hitler is not a leader. But that's not true. Hitler was a fantastic leader. If it would shock you to say, if I say that Lucifer is a fantastic leader, am I making sense here? Leadership, leaders, or what you consider the concept of leaders or leadership, it has nothing to do with your gender, has nothing to do with your religious beliefs or whatever it is that you want to use as a yardstick. However, we have come to appreciate something that there's what they call authentic leadership. What did I say? Authentic. A leadership that is as close to the ideal because there is an ideal we expect from a leader. Am I communicating? And as long as that person is as close to that ideal, we can say this is an example of an authentic leader. Amen. And when we use those kind of year sticks, like, um, for example, Hitler would not have qualified to be a good leader because it was not authentic. He simply used his country, people, to forward his own personal agenda. So we can't say it's authentic. Though he was an effective leader. Very, very effective. Very powerful. He accomplished what many people can only dream of accomplishing. A man like Napoleon was a fantastic leader. Fantastic leader. But they will not consider him, of course, he lost the battle. That's why he's not an authentic leader. If he had won that battle of Waterloo, he would be an authentic leader today. Amen. So if you lose battle, you will not be considered an authentic leader. It's only those who win wars that are authentic. Am I coming? Now, that tells us that when you define leadership, we must ask you, from what perspective are you defining it? Are you defining it from the perspective of the world? Because they have metrics by which they 
evaluate who is and who is not. And when we look at it from the perspective of the kingdom, there are standards and metrics by which the heavens measure leadership. Praise God. Am I communicating? And so when we look at it, can, why, why are you there? Why are you there? It is, I'm talking to you. You. Uh, why are you there? Is it humility? My friend, come and sit down here. This is your seat. You are wasting my time. Dickie, you two are not supposed to be there. Yes. It doesn't matter. When we talk about authority, maybe I will have to deal with this kind of issues. Praise God. Amen. So there are metrics by which we measure who is a leader in the world. And there, is a, there are metrics by which we measure who is a leader in the church. Praise God. And we need to look at those metrics and then we consider that. Then the, 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 there is this issue that I also will want to look at, you know, uh, the making of a leader. How are leader, our leaders make? But see, we agree that it is possible that you can be born a leader and you can be made a leader. Um, then we should find ourselves, how are people made? How are leaders made? What are the situations that bring up leadership? However, I am of the opinion more, of, furthermore, I'm of the opinion that as a believer, every one of us, every one of us are all called into leadership. Every one of us. Tell your neighbor you are a leader. You are a leader. You might ask me, how, why, why am I saying that? Look at Matthew. Let's go at Matthew. Uh, let's, look at, let's check Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. Are you there? Where's Matthew 5? I'm sorry. Let me check. Um, where is that in Matthew? Please just give me a few minutes. I thought I remember what... Where it's worse. But you remember where Jesus Christ said that you are the salt. 13. Thank you. Jesus said this about every one of us. He said you are what? The salt of the earth. And you are what? Forget what is there. Go to 14. I'll come back here. 14. You are what? The light of the world. He now said you are what? A city that is said. Those are leadership attributes. All those things I've mentioned are all leadership attributes. Number one, salt is influential. Salt has capacity to exert influence on his or her surroundings. By that, by that that makes you a leader. Praise God. Remember, you were probably not born a leader by the definitions of the kingdom. But the day you gave your life to Jesus, these scriptures became true about you. And so one of the things heaven will be doing with you is making this a reality in your life. That you must become the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said you are the light of what? The world. I've said it here before and let me use that illustration again. If for any reason this all goes into the dark or it becomes dark. Now, it doesn't matter the position any of us hold in this place. Are you with me? Especially, let's assume that we have dangerous uh, things around here that can hurt us. Are you with me? Now, whosoever has any kind of light will lead us. Are you with me? I will not say because I am the pastor, are you with me? I'm not going to follow you. And no, what nonsense is it? Why are you standing there? Me, I will find my way. Does that make any rational sense? No. Whoever has the light leads. 
So when Jesus Christ said you are the light of the world, automatically he has pronounced that you are the one that will give leadership to the world. Hallelujah. So don't assume, therefore, that because you don't have a position, now that's because we associate leadership with positions. That's another aspect, leadership theory, we may need to look at. Praise God. But that's not what we are looking at this evening. We may look at that because there are a lot of leadership theories. There are a lot of leadership, um, like I told us, a lot of research has gone into that. But that is not what we are looking at. We are looking at these things from the perspective of the kingdom. Once you are the light, you are a leader. And he now said something that you are now a city that is set on the hill that no one can hide. That tells you that you are visible. That gives you visibility. Not only does it give you visibility, you are going to be, attract people. Amen. People don't migrate to villages. Where do they migrate to? They migrate to cities. So if you're a city, you can be sure that people automatically will migrate towards you. And we therefore expect that when they come to you, you should have resources that can take care of them. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter your family background. It doesn't matter what your educational background is. It doesn't matter all those things. It matters not to God. What matters to God are these three fundamental things that he has said about you and I. Very, very fundamental. Things you cannot afford to disbelieve. Hallelujah. If you look at the men of David, the way David organized his kingdom gives you an idea of how God organizes his kingdom. He had captains of thousands, right? Captains of what again? Hundreds. And probably he must have had captains of tens. Praise God. Now, within those hierarchy, there would have been hierarchy. Even in the military, if I'm not mistaken, sir, you have a general, you have, uh, well, there are three types of generals or four types. You have a field marshal, no, no one in Nigeria, which nobody has ever attained. You have the lieutenant general, there's full general, there's lieutenant general, there's major general, there's brigadier general. Am I, am I still correct? Uh -huh. Then you have a colonel, then you have a major, then you have, no? You have lieutenant colonel, like that. Now, if any of them goes to war and the Ogat Patakpa dies, immediately the next person in rank takes over. So, all those, the reason why an officer is different from a recruit, is if it, not it just even recruit, is the amount of responsibilities all of them have. But don't make a mistake. Once you have anything in here, you can lead. You can do what? You can lead. So if circumstances happens that all your guys die and you are just a which one line scorpion line scorpion line scorpion the one that has two which one is the one that has two that's scorpion hey, then before sergeant now sergeant has died you are you are corporal Udogani. everybody expects you even the oga in Abuja expects you to give leadership so the whole rank and file. No, I, I know. I'm, 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 I'm just saying that we are expecting. Are you with me? Some don't rise up to it. But whatever kind of training, at least I know that from American film, that whatever situation you find yourself, once a bag coin, you must stand in. Are you with me? They expect you to do what? To take charge and put things in order. So you don't say, oh, I didn't go to military, I didn't go to officer's uh, training. Nobody wants to hear that from you. So technically, you must come with the mentality that at that level you are, you, carry, you have a measure of leadership. And so you must equip yourself for that. Praise God. And so it is with God's people. And so when the concept comes, and we're talking about God's army, we are talking about authority structure, we are talking about leadership. Praise God. Am I communicating? So these are things you and I must be equipped with. We must know it. No wonder people have written a lot of books on leadership. A lot of books on leadership. 
And it will do well. It will help, you will help yourself if you go and read many of them. Praise God. You have to read many of them. However, my problem is that many leadership books are written from the perspective of the world. They are brought in a lot of wisdom from the world, which is not the best. Glory to God. It's not the best. And, um, and I think it's affecting the church. Now, let me say this. Why we need leaders, why the world needs leaders, and your own kind of leadership, that leader, these things are applicable in virtual every endeavor of humanity. It's applicable in the family. It's applicable in school. It's applicable in college. It's applicable in the community. It's applicable in the nation, in politics, in management, in public and me. Everywhere you need leaders. Now, let me say this. Leadership is not the same thing as management. You can be a manager and not be a leader. Amen. But if you're going to be a leader, you need to know management. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You must know how to manage. But you can be a manager and not understand leadership. Most often times are not, most people who go into business world, who are entrepreneurs, they are technically business leaders. They are not managers. They are, they are, they, all the concepts of leadership is what drives them as entrepreneurs. Hallelujah. That one is a different ballgame again. There are certain skill sets that you need for that, but it's technically the same skill sets as you will do any human endeavor. Any human endeavor, you will succeed at it. There is social entrepreneurs. There are, uh, there are tech entrepreneurs. There are agricultural entrepreneurs. There are entrepreneurs for everywhere. Even what I'm doing, I'm acting as an entrepreneur. Am, am I making sense to you? Because all the basic things about entrepreneurship has to come into play. Amen. So we need it everywhere we go. Now, I want to talk, I'm saying we'll come back to church, but let me just deal with these basic things. Uh, there are different approaches to the study of leadership. There are different kinds of approaches. Uh, you will see the different kinds. depending on the personalities you are dealing with. They, they are not, I want us to look at this. Number one, you have the autocratic approach. The autocratic approach to leadership is a person who is the alpha and the omega. His word is law. Hallelujah. That is autocratic. I find them all over. Nebuchadnezzar was an autocratic leader. Most of the kings you see in the Bible were all autocratic leaders. Praise God. In fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I think even in the modern time, our modern world, in spite of the fact that we have democracy, Obasanjo was an autocratic leader. <laughs> Amen. You, have to do, you can't blame him because he was a soldier by training. He doesn't take half time. It's, he told us that I can advise, I, I'm appointed as an advisor and I'm not bound to accept your advice. <laughs> And most times you didn't accept anybody's advice. Sure, you understand. Then you have the democratic approach. Um, you know, funnily enough, this is just by the way. You know, America is not a democracy. Many people don't know that America is not a democracy. Many people don't know it. They have confused us. America is a republic made up of 50 different states having their own their own uh, institution and everything. They are all states on their own, nations of their own. They are all nation states that agree to bond together. Am I communicating? And so that's why when you, I, mean, I was confused before until they had to explain it to me. Clinton got the highest um, votes, but they pronounced Trump as the winner of the election because he said electoral vote. So, for example, Ondo State may have 20 electoral votes. And Oyo has five electoral votes. Now, you can win everybody in Oyo and win everything. And maybe you will now want 
Ondo, who does not have enough population as of your state. But because of the electoral vote of Ondo, I have 20 versus 4. So you can now have all the population, but popular vote, but you will still lose the election. Yeah, those guys are very funny people. Very, very funny people. To decide. So that would have been very easy. That's why they are not a democracy. Yet they impose democracy on us. Am I communicating? And that's a, so democracy is that we must have all the opinions and then we must now vote. Now it's possible that the majority can be very, very stupid. Are you with me? The majority can be what? Very stupid. But democracy says that majority carries the vote. So we end up doing stupid things because the majority say that's how we want to do it. There's nothing anybody can do. So you understand the whole... <laughs> so, that's, so you have people who are very democratic. They, don't, they want to please everybody. They don't want to be the one that said, it was what I did it to. That's a kind of approach. Then you have the less fair. It's a French word. I cannot claim that I, I know how to pronounce it. Les fair approach. That one is, uh, what will be, will be. Uh, uh, where is that? What's that song? Eskara, Eskara, What will be, will be. Belewaku. Belewakara, me. That is kind of person. Oh, if you when you have people doing like that, eh, 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 look, you can't do anything you want to do. It's a less fair. Are you with me? That's another approach, but they don't go far. They don't get anything done. They just leave everything to faith and allow it to work. Then there's a human relation approach where you want to you know, please everybody. You know, you are, Mimiko is a good example. Mimiko. It's always uh, important. So it will con connive, connive, manipulate everything, and we we support you. Just go. What not buy? What could say now? If I grease your hand, permit you to grease my back. You know that kind of human relations. That's another kind. And he uh, did he not win? He won. The first man in Ondo State history to get second time. Give it to him. I wait to. Baba Jashi to go second time now. Even though they sent him away. But he has not taken that as a situation that is the one that is. Then you have the situation approach, which I've spoken about before. Um, something happened. Okay. I will give you. Do you remember the day those. when Moses. I think what Moses went down up. No, no, that was another time. When uh, the Moabites, the king, uh, by, by, uh, Balak, sent his beautiful girls into the camp of Israel, and everybody was picking his own pick, and judgment came, and God began to kill people. Do you know that Moses was powerless? He was powerless. He couldn't do anything. All the elders were there, dumbfounded, and they were seeing people dying. And they were like, what do we do? Well, Phineas arose and took charge. That is situational leadership. He took charge and executed judgment. And God looked at that and said, yes, this guy is going to remain a leader in Israel for the rest of his generations. Situational. And I told her about Gideon, who was also situational. And that's why many of you, when we talk about these things, you say, well, it doesn't concern me. And the HOD is not here. Let everything spoil. And there's nothing we can do. And we will know whether you are, what you are made of, when situations face you. Whether you will arise. Was that not what um, that woman said, Deborah? So until I, Deborah arose. She was not, she was a prophetess, but she was not the leader in Israel. The man who was the leader in Israel did not do anything. He didn't arise when the situation demanded him to arise. He took a woman to arise and took charge of the situation and brought sanity to Israel. And she became a political leader. And by a word, Israel went out and her word, Israel came in. 
So situations can trust a person up and they will know, oh, this person has a leadership quality. But it was not as if the others did not have it. But they just chose to remain chickens. They just chose to remain irresponsible. Hallelujah. God will help us in Jesus' name. I hope this thing is making a little sense. Then you have the integrated approach. That means you, all these things you can put together and respond as each situation demands it. When you need to be autocratic, you're autocratic. When you need to be diplomatic, you're diplomatic. When you need to be situation, you're situation. I, am I making sense? You, have, you are able to integrate it for effectiveness. All of these things have their advantages and their disadvantages. So you know how to say, so okay, in this situation, I better not be autocratic. Let me be diplomatic. I, I, I mean, are you with me? Then the time comes when I say, oh, I have to be relational. Then another comes when you have to put your foot down and say, no, 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 no. This is how, are, are you with me? It makes for effectiveness. Praise God. Not necessarily your personality. Don't let your personality drive you. Some of us are very moody. And our moody, sorry, <laughs> our mood. Our mood determines the way we lead. God help anybody that day when you're in a bad mood. Oh my God. You're a very bad, in fact, it's a bad day. But the day you are, wow, everybody is, like, but the problem is after a while, nobody knows what they will meet. If they will meet your head at home, or <laughs> your head will be abroad. It's not effective. It doesn't make you effective. So what makes me effective that you understand what you are doing and you do what you need to do as the time demands it? Praise God. You know, they told, they, they told this man, um, Brother Saul, so after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, whatever you choose to do, do. And the brother decided to be prophesy and spent all his opportunity prophesying and he didn't do anything that was meaningful to anybody. And that defined his kind of leadership. He never did anything. When opportunity is given to you, everyone may stand back and want to see how you will react. Whether they will trust you further or they will withdraw their support from you. People don't come, they don't come to limelight. Everyone does not promote somebody to limelight until they've tested the man. And it starts with these small, small things. You remember, you remember David? David did not just appear and they poured all of the zed. They've been testing David since. I believe, see God, I was just thinking about it. There are two times that God came down on earth. He came down to earth to check. And I think that is his nature. I think he normally comes to check things. He gets reports from the earth every time. And he comes to check whether it is as it is said. Am I communicating? The first time, I, when he came down for, Mount, for Babel, when he came down Babel, they told him that those men are building something new. And he said, is it true? Okay, I will come and see myself. He came down and he saw that it was true. You know the rest of the story. In the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, he said he also heard that they are wicked. But is it possible? Whoever it was that went to tell him, I believe they were angels who were giving reports. Our boy is there. Everyone to that rule. But what they are doing, even Satan gone, we are not just Satan gone. And I caught, is it? In our case, I said, ah, so it is true. Are you with me? Now, I believe that before David was promoted, they had gone into their house, into that home, to go and check. They checked and checked and checked. Eventually, they found that they zeroed in on David and said, this guy is like this boy may just be. And they kept quiet. And so, and I believe God was sending tests. Different circumstances were happening to the brothers, to the families. And they saw the art and the attitude of David. And they, let, they zeroed in on him. And they first sent a lion. I don't think it was a lion they started with. I don't know what they would have started with. Maybe it was a dog. Or a snake or something. To uh what they are looking in that down. Eka escalate. They start escalating it. They start escalating it. They start escalating it until they brought it to the day 
the lion came. Have you seen lion before? Oh my God. You, have, you should see a lion. Uh, Vita was telling about it. One of these uh, guys used to go to national, you know, go around, take pictures, do everything. And was in the wild in South Africa or somewhere. He was taking film. When a lioness walked <laughs> towards him and stood beside him, when he realized a lioness was there, he looked at her. The ranger said, Don't move, oh, don't move. Oh. He said, He yeah, started crying. So this is how I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to die. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> If he had made any stupid movement, the lioness would have reacted. Because he was looking at, should I run? He would not have made it. Before you move, move two, three steps, the lioness is upon you. So, that's how those animals are crazy when you see them. They are, they are crazily big. I want the film when the lioness entered into a house and took away the right while. Oh, baby, toy. And rot on top of the Carried the guy, Tom Fence. CCTV was watching money. Right I don't, not by the way. When I was thinking that Rottweiler will stand and say, I will not, I will not, I will not agree. I am not going to be sure. Free lunch. It was, it was supper. It was the night. And David fought it. He must be a lunatic to have gone to fight that thing. Ah, Lion Lakbe. Then yeah, everyone would have said, it is not possible. The boy was, oh, boss away. Oh, boss away. They now sent beer. When the guy took out beer, God said, I have found my leader. Now I can trust this person. Nobody, everyone does not confer things on you until they test you. They must test you. And it comes through all these little, little things that you and I face on a daily basis. How do you react to them? Some of you are so humble that they ask you to do something if you shrink back. I don't want to be... You are just cancelling your name from future opportunities. Then when we are saying, hey, Pastor, um, we are thinking, who can go to help us do this? Ah, Emil, Maishé, Maishé, your idea is bad, bad. This one, you can't trust him. <laughs> so, it's so ambitious. <laughs> yes, sir. You now see where you need wisdom. If God does not teach you wisdom, go and ask him for wisdom. So that you know when to bear and when to come. Because if everyone expects you to jump and you don't jump, they will consider it as a, an offense. Very timid. So sure so you understand. So you need to know. Because everyone is watching how will he or she react. So if I were you, when you face a situation, you pray to heaven, say, what should I do, Lord? The Holy Ghost has access to the Father's heart. If the Father expects you to do this, then you do it. Then you pass. But just as you pray, normally, by the reason of the fact that I'm the son of a dudua, ah, my chest is big for it. Ah, heaven says, oh, yeah, I trust there. Ah, no, 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 no. He believes in the dudua too much. Glory to God. So, uh, <laughs> there are many things I want. Let me just continue to say. Now, what are the expected qualities of leaders? What are the expected qualities? I would have really loved to take each of them one by one. But maybe in later, in later um, discourse, we will take it one by one. There are many skills a leader must have. And there are many skills it must develop. These skills are things that you may not be born with. You know, uh, Charles, Bro Charles Broughton. I don't know how many of us knows that man. Charles, is it Charles Broughton or a great American, great British actor that lived, I think he died about 10, 50 years ago. Is this Charles or is Broughton? I want Broughton kind of thing. I was telling somebody, I said this man was born in Stamara. And by the fact that he was a stammerer, he was not qualified to act. How do you want to act in Hollywood? You can act. Yet acting was his passion. Am I making sense? By wisdom of men, he should look for something else to do. Am I communicating? 
But the man overcame that shortcoming and became an excellent speaker. That was reputed to be one of the most, um, how do I put it, influential voices. You know, when he speaks, he has a baritone. That when you hear the thing arrests your attention. How did he do it? He had to practice not to stammer. He had to practice not to stammer. It was not easy. But he overcame it and became the top player in his field. What am I saying? That in your making, there are things you may have to practice. You must learn it. You have to learn it. Please let me say this. Ministry, many men of God said, they say ministry is 5% inspiration. Or 95% perspiration. When Paul said that, give them double honor, those who labor among you in the word and what else? In doctrine. is work. I mean, when you want to preach, you just come under the Holy Ghost and so say, yeah, preach on love. And just come and start talking on love. I can guarantee you, ask us or kuso. You, no, you ask, you, are, you, will, you will misjive. After that inspiration, brother and sister, go and sit down with your cocker dance and with your study Bibles and recite everything, everything on love. It's a lot. In the days of studies, I can put five different books, everything in there. I will be checking this one. I will be checking this idea. I will be checking that idea. I will be checking until everything comes together. Now, it can take me one week to prepare one hour message. One week of study to prepare one hour message. And all you will see is the Bible I'm carrying. So I want to be a man of God. It's work. It's work. Praise God. So what am I saying? You need to train yourself. Nothing in life is easy. Even if you are called, you, training is important. Learning is important. Equipping is important. Amen. But people have taken it very far. To the point that they have a school where they polish you. School of finishing. Where they teach you how to dress. They teach you how to brand. They teach you how to speak. The kind of way you speak your, you know, the way you say praise God. Don't say praise God like I'm saying. Oh, praise God. God. I'm not asking you to go that far. Am I communicating? But if you know that you have a ministry and they have sent you to people that speak Oigo, please go and learn English. If they are sent to people that can speak Yoruba, go and learn it. It will not come by anointing. Most often times, God does not anoint people for that kind of work. You just get there and say, Holy Ghost, gift of tongues. And you speak to speak Ekale. And you have not you before. Really, do you have? I'm not saying that God can't do it too. God has done it before. But it is not his way of doing things. It's an exception, not a rule. No, it's not a rule. So if you are said to people that though they can't speak English, go and learn their language. You have to put in effort to it. Hallelujah. So these are skills you need to build yourself up in. It doesn't matter which level you find yourself. You may find yourself in the academics. You may find yourself in the church. You, these things are general and common to all of us. Hallelujah. No, and, and it's not exhaustive. I don't have an exhaustive list here. Number one is communication. You must know how to communicate. I'm not saying you speak. There is speaking and there is communication. Hallelujah. But when you say an orator, an orator is a powerful speaker and a powerful communicator. The man has mastered the art of words. He can, he can, he, he can bring words together. That by the time he finishes, you yourself say, oh, all right, it's clear to me. And in, in communication, you must understand your subject matter. Immediately people pick up the vibe. Oh, that's a Christ, not a Christian word. It's an English word. What they pick up 
or, or sense that you are saying it's okuso, you have lost them. They know you are not an authority. It's like you ask him to talk about fishermen. What do I know about fishing for Christ's sake? I don't know anything. Those who know fishing, by the time I get to a point, I'll get, oh boy, you're more jack. Hey, I call Loso do it. If I don't do it, I call sorry, in the name of Jesus. Where are you fishes? We gather here. We have a meeting. Then I'll use basket to scoop there. You know, this guy is now fake. I might complicate. You must know your subject matter. That's why you study. You must be good at what you are doing. So communication is key. Ability to speak the language is key. When you have well, I want to pray. I want to ask you, please. When people are talking to you, don't mind, don't worry. Forgive them the trespass that they want to trespass. If you speak it, some of you cannot stay under a preacher that is speaking Yoruba. You will walk out. Because you were raised in an English speaking country. It should have been like that. Does a man have an understanding of the stuff? Of what is communicating. If he can, if he has the stuff and is letting, please take it. Don't worry. Hallelujah. I believe Apollos was a mighty orator. Was mighty. He was skillful in words. If they put Apollos and Paul, Apollos with La Paul. But in depth of understanding, it's a bit day. Because Paul was trained as a lawyer. So if it's argument, ah, what will take you to clean us? It will clean you out. That time you write three epistles, you yourself will sit down. But quick, we handle microphone. Paul is not a meat. In fact, Apollos is not Paul's meat. So you can understand why some were Apollos. And some were... <laughs> Peter, because Peter was the one who walked on water. He had followers. Because I need direct access. To he walked on water. Hallelujah. But to my dear Ronnie, give it to Apollos. Amen. But you and I must learn how to communicate. Don't tell me, Pastor, I can't preach. I don't want to hear it. Please, I beg you. I beg you. If you don't know it, go and learn it. Hallelujah. Now, you may not be as good as. Me, Pastor Dele, Pastor B, Pastor Ogi, you may not, but that you cannot stand and deliver. No. Tell your neighbor, Allah <laughs> Majari. That you can't talk. Ah. <laughs> I reject it in Jesus' name. So, <laughs> ability to talk in public is very important. Pastor, well, as a doctor now, he can talk anywhere. He will go to international conferences and face the whole world and have to talk. You can come and say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer. But nobody wants to hear that. He must want to talk in public. Paul stood on Ante and the hill of Antes, the hill of Antes, and spoke to the whole public. Paul, Peter stood up and spoke to thousands of people. You must be able to speak. You don't know where God will send you. You must be able to speak. And that's why we want to give you an opportunity to come and get used to it. Uh, it was surprising when Professor Akpata came here. The first time he came, he couldn't talk. I, 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 I talk now. He said, could I be, could I be? <laughs> Amen. I remember when we had our oral defense when we were in school. Well, no, we didn't do oral defense. We did a seminar presentation. I found out that all of us who were leaders in fellowships did extremely very well. Very well. Because we're used to talking and facing crowd. But all our mates who were not in fellowship, who didn't have anything. I had one. Engineer Fashai. I will not forget. He sweated from the beginning to the end. He stammered from the beginning. To, he was drenched 
in sweat. Like, what I want to tell Mr. Ren, the lecturer just said, go and sit down. Okay, to try. Go and sit down. Because the boy could easily have gotten out attack. It was clear. Because when he was telling me, oh, man, kumbi. They had to let him go. And when I came up, I didn't even consult notes. Hallelujah. I was just talking. Uh, now that was, amen. We had a lecturer, Odo State man, late Professor Ogboja. If Ogboja says no, your case is finished. There is no consultant. There is no appeal. It's the last appeal. As I started, that, I, ah, I said, I like this boy, I like this boy, I like this boy. The whole class said, that's how I felt. The whole class had no choice but to fall in line. But you got favor on here. Because the way I presented, I just started, you see, this is this. I'm talking about this equation and this and this. I said, and I not as a gentleman, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you. I'm presenting. So I like this boy. I like this boy. Where did I get that from? Church in me. You must learn it. So we give you a microphone. Don't come here. It's not humility. It annoys me. That will sorrow. Receive grace in Jesus' name. There should be no member of PG that I can't talk. Even if we make mistake to put you with Aida Tiwa to do the bait, you will fly Aida Tiwa. Ah, because you are not, you are not okay right now. Praise God. Amen. I hope you get what I'm saying. Shall. Glory to God. You must be an active listener. Because communication requires you to listen. And I think that is a training we all need to learn. For example, we have preconceived ideas. Once I hear certain words, those words are associated with certain things. That, uh, and I often do this with Pastor Bilu. I said, no, no. Pastor said, no, no, no. You have not let me finish. We are always fighting that fight. I'm, I'm learning. I'm going to learn it. It's something I have to learn. How to be patient and listen. The problem you have is that when you are listening, your mind is running, you are connecting thoughts. And um, some of us are not very intelligent. That God, like me, you no, know, I can forget. When you make one point, you make two points. When I try to get four points, you lose track. So, I will go from number one to five. My hair. I want to pay me more argument you make. She understand. That's why, that's why. She understand Pastor D. So, anytime you see me stop Pastor Bilo, you know why I'm stopping Pastor Bilo. I saw you to be breaking your argument down to two points. I can follow you. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Communication, you must learn how to write. No one knows where you will find yourself. But please, you must know how to write. Ability to communicate via writing is key. Is key. Though, as pastors, we don't have... Uh, it's not really required of us that we should write. Since we have, I have every all of them here. Go ahead and write this letter. Go ahead and write this letter. Praise God. You know, I can do that. But I think it's good. You never, you can never, can't. Suppose you are going to see governor, they give you sheets of paper to write. Why, why are you here? You start writing, I am here because uh, my father is, the... governor will see you. Because you can't write, you can't communicate. Because I had, uh, I, 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 and your way you write is also the way you think. So you need to discipline the way you think. Imagine, we had the opportunity of seeing the former deputy governor then, that was Dr. Agagu. As we came into his presence, he said, you have only five minutes to say what you want to say. Five minutes. If I start greeting, call, ah, Ekpele, sir, congratulations, sir. Ah, Lua, Duka, Tango, because they just won the election. How many? I've, I've already used three minutes in greeting. Where do I want to say the remaining thing that I came there to do? It's lost. So you may know, you must find out to, you have to be brief and to the point and concise. It's a skill you must learn. In addition to your listening, in addition to your writing, these are things you must learn. Some of us may need to know that. Praise God. The other thing that you must learn are technical competence skills. Now, if I'm talking to potential 
employ, employees. So I'm talking to you how you are supposed to get a job. Um, every every um, industry have what they call technical skills they are looking for. Those skills can be broken into soft skills and hard skills. The hard skills are the things you learned in school. All the subject matters you are supposed to master. Am I communicating? And it becomes difficult. It becomes difficult when all of you that apply for the job, you that made first class or two one. So how do I differentiate who is the best out of, the, out of all of you? So we now shift attention to what we call soft skills. One of the major things that you must learn is how to play as a team member. You must know how to play as a team. How to function in a team. And that's why in school, if you remember, they gave, they, will, or they gave you, for those of you who have gone through it, and those of you who still go through it, they will give you what they call a, 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 um, a team project. Or a problem that the five, six, or seven of you have to work on to solve. You will find out that only two or three people will solve that problem. The rest will just be looking like Don't United. And once they observe that, you'll begin to lose that opportunity. It's a skill you must learn. And let me come back to conversation. You must learn how to, be, how to make conversation. One-on-one -on -one conversation, general conversation. You must, it's a skill you must learn. Some of us went to boys' only school. We don't know how to talk with a woman. Some of us went to boys, girls' only school. We don't know how to talk to a man. And I found that I have a problem in this church. And it's not only in this church. We have everywhere. Many of you do not have relational skills. How to relate with the opposite sex. You don't know it. And truly, to tell the truth, I don't know even how to teach you. I don't know yet. How do you teach, some, how do you teach something like that? How do, how do you do? It's like when you say, woman, this is how you act. How, is it possible? I expect you to just know, but somehow some of you don't know. You don't even know how to relate. You don't, and you're not talking like, you can't talk to a sister like that. I now say the time will not, we want to propose, they will, listen, they will not listen to you. Praise God. You raise your hand in church, go, all the sisters in this church, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know how to talk. Oh, we'll see application, I can my jail. These are part of the things you must learn. You don't talk like that. Amen. <laughs> you should talk, I don't, should I start teaching them that one? If I can. It will help. But the truth, I just confess that I don't know how. But I'll be thinking and praying about it and trusting God to help me. So I'll come back again and speak about this. You have to learn it. You have to learn to relate with people. Especially the opposite sex. You must understand it. Girls, boys are not like girls. We, they are, they are, we are not like you. The God did not make us like you. So don't expect us to know certain things. We will not, we don't know if we are not told. Brothers, girls are not like us. Amen. So, we come on now. We will love it. Those of us who have successfully married, it was God who helped us. Honestly speaking, I have no clue. My own is, even when I went to propose, I preached for one hour. Look at them saying, your turn will come. I will say, you will survive your own. So, you are sharing now. And nobody taught us. Nobody explained it to us. Nobody put us through. I just thank God that my wife said yes. Otherwise, sir, just made my life miserable that day. And to call the and to even had injury on injury side the salt. The car now died. I refused to start. And she had to push the car for me. My mom's car that I borrowed to go and do fine boy. May our case not be like that. So you need you need skills, you need different skills, different skill sets come. But for our own particular uh, setting, I think you should pay attention to ability to handle crisis. 
ability to judge situations accurately. No, we don't we judge people and we just judge them wrong. If you're going to be an effective leader, you must know how to judge. You must know how to motivate. Motivate yourself and motivate others. Hallelujah. You must know how. There are times when people are down, you must know how to, you know, to, to help them to move up. It's not every time we shut people down. It's not every time we look down on people and say, but I expected this. The person may just need help at that point. Praise God. You must know how to negotiate. Then you must know how to meet deadlines. Is, do you know that this is a request or a, a prerequisite for functioning in any given society now in this world today? Ability to meet deadlines. That is why your school has factored that into your whole life. They give you assignments and they say there is a deadline. It's to get you used to it. Life is about deadlines. Nobody has the time to wait on you forever. Am I communicating? They don't have the time. So it's a given that you must know how to work within a time space. More importantly, uh, that means that if you are going to work within deadlines, you must know how to do burn the midnight oil. That is true in all situations. Chancellor was telling me they gave him assignment, was, he was applying for a job and they gave him certain assignment and they gave him two or three days to produce the result. He had to burn the midnight oil to meet that target. That's what they want to see. Can this guy work under pressure? So it's given in your life. Don't ever say, this lecturer, they are wicked people. God will judge them. God is not judging them. They are doing it to get you ready for the challenges ahead. So what makes you think that when you come to church, there should be no deadlines? That we want this uh, um, all cleaned in within the next 30 minutes. You may say, but pastor, we are only three. You know, I don't care. You know why? Because I need to put on that pressure to get, to get it done. You can't do it in 30 minutes. So, Lami, are you hearing me? You don't just come and you tell your people you have one hour, one get this place clean, and we are out of here in the next. You will be shocked that they will comply. Because this is the training you, that will equip you for the challenges ahead. Praise God. So you must learn by, by, you must learn how to, and also you must learn to be on time. Many of us are not on time. Ah, we're Nigerians. I did not know when I went to Belgium that they don't live like us. I was able to get to the bus stop 7.30 here. It may assume by 7, 20, 7 35, 7 40, the boss will still be waiting because they used to wait for us in the in, in Ikeja. <laughs> she get a hurry boss. He come back to Ikeja. I did. I got there. I didn't, the boss had go, I saw the boss going like this. The next boss that came was 30 minutes after. I kept getting to the venue of the meeting late because I could not keep to time. Nigeria doesn't keep to time. We don't keep, to, we, we are just, right. but you see, you, we cannot continue like that. Can't continue like that. And so when the church says, we are meeting five o'clock, we all agree we are meeting five o'clock. And you are not even around at five. It's just people just strolling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor, how are you doing? Hallelujah. That's, that's six o'clock. Oh. It's already 30 minutes late. It's expected that you guys will wait for him. Because that about it a day. Oh, oh Timber service. So I can't stroll in. You are cutting your own future small by small. So these are things we must work on. Because if you are going to be leaders, you must work on time. We we'll talk about time management later on. Praise God. How much time do I have, Pastor? I'm not looking at it. Okay, I have about 20 minutes. Please, you must learn confidentiality. 
It means you must learn how to keep trust. Many of us are not trustworthy. It's not only, I'm not talking about you, even pastors, leaders are not trustworthy. I've been, look, where somebody went to confide in pastor, and the next Sunday, the matter was tabled for the old church. Hey, sister, come over in the church. I'm speaking in Yoruba, but it was not spoken in Yoruba. There are some of you. Hey, one well, sister. Hey, you st by the time the description was finished, we knew where hey, who was the person. Who's the sister? You think that person will trust anybody again in her life? But you see, that leader failed because he had not learned how to keep people's secrets. You have to learn to keep secrets. Are you with me? But you know Nigerians, Pastor, they say I should not tell you anybody. But as of Emma, as of anybody, you <laughs> have betrayed trust. The way I look at it is this. There are issues that when it comes to you, if you are not going to be able to handle it, let the person know, sorry, I cannot keep this secret. I have to escalate it. Are you with me? I have to escalate because you need help. Definitely you need help. I can't help you. I need some other people to step in and help you. Praise God. The important thing is that you, you are helped. I, I might make it sense, but you see, we must not betray each other's trust. That's what I'm trying to say. Please, learn it. It's not easy. Oh. There is a spirit that will be staring your heart. Wait, talk it. Talk it. Talk. Especially if you are going to sit with somebody like Brother Malolu may not talk. You want to start and make him talk. So you get it. Before you know it, Brother Malolu, <laughs> with the gun call. Because you know that when you raise that issue, you open up. Hallelujah. And you start betraying trust. Let us be let us be prayerful about this. There are things that, it's, it's, it's a, this one is a double-edged sword. It's double-edged because you may hear something that the authorities or people in authority need to hear. But because you are trustworthy, you will not say it. But when problem now starts, I will now say, why did you not tell us? He told me not to tell anybody. So, so now, now you're doing it. Now, see your eyes are clear now. We will have to judge you too. Are you with me? So, uh, may God grant us wisdom. In Jesus' name. You have to be, but please be trustworthy. That's, let me just use it, just be trustworthy. Not just keeping secrets, but be trustworthy. If you're, if you, it's about to let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. Simple. Let it just be like that. Nobody's going to kill you. You say, Lord, I, can, I, I, I'm, I, I can't do that. I cannot, I, I, I will do that. Once you agree to do something, please do it. If you are not able to keep it, pick your phone and call the person. Sorry, under these present circumstances, I'm going to no, I will not be able to keep it. I'm sorry. Are you with me? It helps a lot. It helps a lot. Amen. Now, physical appearance. That's under, uh, I spoke about your dress code and all that is very, very important. Um, I don't know. Here in this church, I don't, I've not managed the men to be wearing suits. Praise God. Some people make it that we are corporate people who wear suits. Maybe I should mandate that everyone should be wearing starch, starch shirts as our own corporate. We should not be starched. Or we should wear Brodigy. Bro I saw Brodigy coming. This can hang. Can you not wear Brodigy? Wait, don't go, don't go, go stay there. What is this one that Brother Jesus is wearing? What is this? Okay, no more. Uh, you'll talk about that tomorrow. Like, I know, I, Abby, look, me, I think it's stupid or stupidity to be wearing suit in this old son. <laughs> it's completely stupid. It doesn't make any sense to me. Praise God. Eh? No, no, it's not. That is the problem now. It's a bold dress. Why, why must I wear a suit because it's not my job? Who, who defined it? Why can't we wear our traditional dress? What's wrong with our dress? Mommy was talking about Ofi. Why is it wrong for me to wear Ofi to, to work or to church? Oh, see now. It's my traditional dress. Now, why should I forbid it? Why, must, why can't you wear it to... No, am I making sense? You come for an interview, you don't wear a suit, you are failed. 
What is wrong? They say, no former. Who defines that? This company is good for me. It's crap. That is if I open my own company. <laughs> I can't be saying that. But if I go to somebody else's company, who can wear a suit? Don't say your pastor says you don't wear a suit. <laughs> but my own company, if it's my company, the only thing that don't call me slippers, don't call me uh, t shirt. Am I making sense? Praise God. Relax. Let me see your eyes. <laughs> Are you a bishop? Eh? Yeah, remove your heart. <laughs> oh, you can remove your heart. Ah, put it back, put it back. So like, my bad, my bad, no, it's you, my bad, no, it's Thank God for joining mercies. God bless you. There are personal qualities you must work on. Your own personal qualities. There are so much that I would have loved to say along this line. But if you are going to be effective as a leader, there are many things you have to look at. Um, your fruit of the spirit and all that is very, very important. But more importantly, I want to talk about initiative. When a man is called a leader, when a man leads, one of the great things that we must see in him is ability to path a thing and execute it. And we see it being produced. You must have that capacity. Listen to me. This is the same thing as the ability to be impregnated. Are you with me? When we talk about fruitfulness, that this man is fruitful, Go and look at the fact that you find out the fact that the man is able to bring forth. Now, who is this man in um, in this in the story of the kings, Uzziah? Who was, where, where is that? First, is the first chronicles where? Eh? Is this second chronicles? It's chronicles. It's chronicles. Second Chronicles 26. Please look, look, at, look for it. Matthew, can you hear me? Are you there? Say, then all the people of Judah took Uzziah. Now, 16 years old was he. Now, he was 16 years of age. So, it has nothing to do with age. Am I communicating? When he began to reign, and he reigned 15 and 2 years in Jerusalem, his mother's name also was Jokolea of Jerusalem. Now verse 4. Can you continue? Continue, please. Continue, please. Continue, please. Continue. Do you want me to sing song for you? Brush you. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. Next verse. Next verse. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to do what? To prosper. Now we're going to now study what he did that we can consider prosperity. Now verse, now verse 6. Can you go to verse 6, please? And he went forth, and what did he do? He warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabnea and the wall of Ashdod and built cities round about Ashdod and among the Philistines. Verse 7. And God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gobal and the Mehunims. And the Amorites gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad, even to the entering of Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Verse 9. Moreover, Uzziah built what towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. 10. He also built towers in the desert, and dig many wells, for he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains. Us Bad men also, and vine dressers in the mountains, and the camel, for he loved husbandry. Next verse. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men that went out to war by bands, and according to the numbers of their camp, by the hand of Jael, the scribe, and the Maseah, the ruler, under the hand of Ananiah, one of the king's chap captains, in 12. And, and it said the whole number of the chief of the fathers of the mighty men of valor were 2,000. Where did he say he built? He used ages. There was a place he talked about ages. 15, okay. Jump to 15. Because this one, this story is boring me. 
and he made the Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones without and his name spread far abroad for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. How did he prosper? He must sought God and God prospered him. But you see, he began to build. Those were initiatives. The kings before him did not do that. The kings before him did not come up with novel ideas of how to go about solving these problems. He invented these this engines. This, he invented them. He conceptualized them. He called them. I want you guys to come up with a problem. I mean, I have a problem. I want to deal with these people. I want to be able to shoot arrows. You know, instead of us shooting one arrow, how many are we going to kill? I want us to have an engine that we can, something we just do like this. I'll just shoot 20 like that. So you guys, go and think about it and come back. And those guys came and said this, we have a design. Listen to me. I don't have to solve all the problems. It's not my job. In within you is a capacity to be creative and take initiatives. I told of Reverend Akim Ola, the pastor bought a new camera. That night, Saturday night, he went to his house and said, bro, this is the camera. We are going live tomorrow morning. Live tomorrow morning. By, the brother said he did not sleep. He read the whole manner from beginning to the end. He practiced. By morning, they went live in America. But if I were to give some of you that assignment, you would tell me it's not possible. I wonder why why we are not making progress. It's because somewhere in you, you have not developed the capacity to bath things. You must, you must be able to bath things, bring something forth. These are things that make for great leaders. You must be creative. You must take initiative. You must bath things. There are a thousand ways to make this work better. I don't have all the answers. Are you with me? Look, look at the men of David. How much do you think David was able to do to expand that kingdom? Not much. Not much. All the fightings that were done, David was not the one doing the fightings. When his men were going to neighboring lands to go and raid and go and plunder and bring back plunder, he was not the one doing it. It was his men that went to plunder. Praise God. So, why must it be that when I don't call for General evangelism, nobody does evangelism. God must awaken this capacity in us. These are things that make for leadership. You must always take initiative. You must come up with ideas. Pastor, we can do this. Okay, how do you want us to do this? How much is it costing us? And you can go ahead and do it. I don't have to be the one to do it. You think they will give me the praise? Sure, the people say, ah, PGT is moving. It is me they know. Fine. But we know it was you. No, I told a young lady here, she went to go and start a prayer ministry. I did not, she didn't tell me. It was a friend who came to tell me that she was going to start a prayer ministry. And we sat down there. I had that brother and Pastor Bello. I said, we heard you want to go and start a prayer ministry. Ah, you run up my mom, you. Ah, no. I said, well, whether they are lying or they are not lying. I said, I have a problem. I said, I've never had you pray for anybody in this church before and that person had a, had a breakthrough or had their prayers answered. You have not prayed for anybody before in this church. So what makes you think you can succeed as a prayer minister? You follow what I'm saying? Ah, no. Uh, she left and went to start a prayer ministry. The thing has died and properly died to not resurrect. Because you were here, you have not prayed for anybody before. And what makes you think you can succeed in ministry? It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Am I communicating? In these small, small things, we would have seen ah, the way God is moving in this person's life. He prays for the people who has leg problem. Their leg gets healed. He prays for this. I am sure that if he starts a ministry, healing ministry, he will do well. Because he has been proved Am I communicating? Am I making sense? Take advantage of the people. If you believe God has called you to healing, please look, 
Practice with all of us. Practice on us. Just come, bro, bro, Lulu. Oh, yeah, yeah, bring your head. Bring your head. The Lord has said, <laughs> Amen. If bro, Lulu does not get here, know that, oh, it is sharp, rap, rap. We are tuned, kind of low retune. Amen. By the time you go around all of us, the thing we click, hey, motivate, hey, praise God. Hallelujah. That is how it starts. Amen. So you have the right to say, Pastor, I'm testing. <laughs> go ahead and test. Go ahead. Take initiative. The purpose of the Spirit began to move um, Samson between people were down and uh, that village. I don't know the name of that village. It was people were watching the way God was moving. So when it was time and Samson stepped forward, they knew. Same was with Samuel. The Bible says the word of God came to Samuel. They were watching him as God was using him until after many years they said, it is true. This guy has a calling on his life. Because it was in that place he was testing it. You will look, you will not do well if you have not tested this thing they have given you. Test among us. We can make fun of you. You pray for us and my leg is still pending me. Don't worry. You are among brethren. Are you with me? It's better we laugh now and then go and celebrate you outside. I hope, I hope we are not fighting me tonight. Test it. Don't be shy. Test it. We are believing God for the supernatural. Let us start doing it now. You can give word. Oh, my children, my children, there will be rain this evening. Two by rain. Okay, bros. Oh, can get any. It doesn't make a false process. What Allah, allow to what to try again? Only goes me will get it. What were you trying to say? Maybe you were trying to say there will be sun in the evening. And I didn't get you. Praise God. Shay, you get it. You keep on going at it until you come into the place of perfection. Now let me begin to uh, this well. Praise God. Okay. Now. I want to talk, I want to go, go back and let us look at Mark 10, 42 to 45. Mark 10, 42, 42 to 4. Now, Jesus called them to him and said unto them, Say, so you know that they which are counted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And their great ones exercise authority upon them. Please let me pause here and look at this again. Technically, there are two kinds of leadership models in the, land, in the earth the Gentilic and the kingdom. They are not the same. It's unfortunate that many in the kingdom use Gentilic model to, to work among the people of God. You will ask me, what are we talking about? Now look at this. It says the, 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 they say that they which are counted to rule those who have the privilege to rule, those who have been allowed to rule, what do the Bible says they do? They exercise lordship. You know what lordship means? Lordship means lord. It means the guy has the final say over your life. Whether you and I like it, the all of us like it when the Tunubu pronounced all the thing he did. What did we do? We grumbled. It ended up with nothing. That's lordship. He has spoken, and so is this. Nobody, nobody can change. Look at the national anthem. Did they consult us about the national anthem? No. That's lordship. And what does they do? The Bible says they exercise authority. Authority. We'll talk about authority later, but that's how the Gentiles operate. Rulership and authority are key. 
They dominate the people. They subjugate the people. This, and you see, it's sad that we expect so much from them. Lucifer has helped them and he has downloaded certain wisdom into some people that they are, they are now being, they've been taught. You cannot walk among these Gentiles if you have not learned their wisdom. I was talking to somebody this morning. I said the reason why none of us can be required to, they will not call us to come and walk with them, is that if you, have not, if you are not a criminal, and they don't have a criminal record of you, they can't trust you. Because if the FCC come, you say, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. Sure, you get it. But it's like one of jail, bonta, criminal. Oh, le sorrow. Oh, le sorrow. I can't calm down. Criminal and Goboa. They're all criminals. So they can't trust you. You just watch happen with Jimmy Ibrahim lately. I'm even about the Jimmy Ibrahim saga. I will go to court. I am going to Supreme Court. Ah, this case in Odo State. I will show them. <laughs> they were begging the was I will not agree. They called it to us. Okay, bros. I don't see. He came out and said, I have dropped the charges. <laughs> you can't work with them. They are not a criminal. If they know, they can't make the mistake they made with, they made with Daniel. There was a mistake that allowed Daniel to come to the kingdom. The guy wrecked them. So not many of them that died over Daniel's case. Satan has not made that mistake again. Once they look at it, oh, oh, oh Lord George, I'm <laughs> back as Egbert. It's the wisdom of the world. There's a book they call The, the Prince. Demonic book. But then they now brought another one. 48 laws of that was what Mimiko read. I was scattering on those states. How do I know? In his first time as commissioner of, of health, Ade Farati was taking study commissioners to America. For My uncle was there, late chief uh, Dr. Audu. And Mimiko began to cry. He began to agitate. He must go to America with them. Adifari said, no, you are not going. He took Dr. Adu to beg Adifari to let this small boy go. He was a small boy to them. So he went. They took him along to the entourage. That at least on health issues, he would talk to those people so that he can come bring investors. Mimiko got to America and fell sick. So he could not attend to anything. So he took Dr. Adu to speak on a Greek and, and health. So when they got back in the night, Dr. Azu said, being a doctor, um, this boy that we brought from Nigeria to America that fell sick suddenly, we, we, may we not carry his dead body back to meet the mother? Let us go and check it. You know what the man Miko was doing? He was busy reading the prince and the 48 laws of power. <laughs> that was, because that book was not... In America and there. So he needed to get there. That was why he was going. Ah, Adefati was mad. But by the time he got to Nigeria, or the Bai Shisha, he forgot everything. They had, the guy had called Nigeria, they had done. So all of you that said, they brought that. That's the guy I don't love you. That was what he used to deal with us. Now there are the people in Asurok now, are not, and I've left that level. Those guys sit with Satan and collect the pure download. I want to go and work with them. You two must eat something. New. The Gentiles exercise lordship. Whatever it will take them to subjugate you and subdue you, they will do it. Next verse. Next verse. But whosoever of you will be chiefest, which is contrary to the way the Gentiles do it, then which of you will be chiefest? What did you say you should do? Of the servant. That is a paradox. 
based on what I was raised with, how can I be the chief and be the servant of all? It doesn't make any sense. Now, they've coined that to me servant leadership. But exactly what does it really, really mean? The truth is that, the truth is that anyone that will come to leadership in church, there must be evidence that he has been a servant. He has been serving. Anyone that we cannot prove to have served should not come to leadership. And what does it mean? The truth is that a person who is your servant, does he have closing hours? Eh? He doesn't have closing hours. He doesn't have many things, privileges. He has been stripped of his privileges. Amen. So, in reality, whoever is going to serve in God's kingdom must be a man or a woman who is willing to serve. Now, there are motivations or motives. People want to come to leadership because it is fashionable. They carry their Bible, they sit in front, they do all that. When we want to, uh, when we want to eat, it is the one that our first have. So you want to come to leadership. We understand all that. But that should not be your motive. That should not be your motive. Your desire must be to serve God's people. And when people tell me, oh, daddy, you bless me, and I tell them, it's my honor. It's an honor for me to serve you. They don't seem to understand what I'm saying. I really mean what I'm saying. Look, it's a privilege to, because you are God's children. Serving you is what they sent me to do. It's an honor to serve you. Praise God. So, this is not, how I use the word, an opportunity for me to take advantage of you. Are you with me? Of course, as the Gentiles, like I said, Dick King, go and bring your car. We are going to Ondo tomorrow. Benny. choice. Hello, do not near. Praise God. Even more, I can even say I'm not buying fuel. Go and buy the fuel. Benny, that is too sorrow. But that is Gentilic leadership. If I see myself as a servant, should I not appeal to him. Now, it's a double-edged sword. Because I've, I was sent to Odo by God and I sought your assistance, I refused to see, they will judge you. Because you did not help. I don't know whether you are making sense. I'm making sense to you. It's a double-edged sword. It's as much as I do not have the right to impose myself on you, you yourself should know, you don't have the right to flex. So that when the reward comes, it is those, the person who preach and the person who carry the preacher, they get their reward. Praise God. And therefore, it's not about me. We are Koram. We don't do that. The Gentiles can do that, but you should not do that. But you will ask me, Pastor, my time is gone. I think I, will end I have so much to say. But I will continue. If time permits me tomorrow, if there's still more time, because I want you to, to ask questions. Um, if, you know, if, if for any reason, any, any, any reason, you as a person think it's, 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 it's beneath you to serve God's people. Look, listen to me. You cannot, even if you are the MD, you should not, it should not be something of shame if you come to church and sweep the floor. Never get it in your head that I'm bigger than that. It must never, you never please get to that level. If your job, even if you become this head of central bank and you are the usher in church, please come and hush. Stop giving excuses. Pastor, you say, my PA will come and do the ushering for you. Your life is going. Is vaporizing before your eyes. What's your way of saying it? Life, eh? What a law. Don't do that. Don't do that. Serve God's people. See, look, Jesus is our Lord. Whatever it is you are, 
out there is irrelevant when you come here. Are you, am I, are you still with me, church? Is it relevant? Please, that is not to say, hey, Joe, I'm begging you, that when Pastor D becomes professor, or Pastor Ogi becomes CMMD, are you with me? Now that they said, can you, I can come and say, yeah, please let me clean my shoe. Mark Ojai here. Don't, the angel, don't let the angels slap you. Honor all men. Honor them. Age is there. Because of age, honor them. Because of their status, honor them. Because of anything, honor them. Because they are brethren, honor them. Amen. I think I should stop. But I still have so much to say. What can I? Yeah. Ah. Oh, Professor of Characteristics of Good Leaders. Questions. Let's take questions. All right.